We're going to start with uh, our partner workshops. We're going to spend um, seven minutes or so with, with each one of our partners. Um, and uh, we'll start with, uh, hold on one second. Let me bring my list here. Um, who are we starting with? We are starting with uh, Ascent. So Andy, are you there? Yes, sir. Thank you, Miguel. Um, Obviously, I'd like to thank uh, Lumiata first for you know giving us the opportunity um, to help host this um, and partner with this hackathon. Um, so a little bit about Ascend. Um, Ascend is a unified data engineering platform. Um, we are a Paul also based startup. Um, and what we've been doing recently around COVID-19 is we've uh, opened up our data engineering platform um, to anyone who wants to build a COVID-19 data project. Um, so if you navigate to ascend.io slash COVID-19, um, filling out your information right here will automatically grant you immediate access to our data engineering platform itself. And what we've done here is we've created a data vault of every single potential COVID-19 related data set that we could find online, whether this be um, the public S3 COVID-19 data lake from AWS, GCP's public BigQuery COVID-19 related data, uh, I know Snowflake star schema data and a lot of others from different universities and different websites that we can find. Um, so what we offer here um, as a downstream data pipeline platform is the capability to really join data sets um, from all sorts of different resources. Um, so this, this will allow you to analyze stuff like trials, um, confirmed cases or whatever kind of data that you want um, for free. And we will automatically host and help you productionize um, your data pipeline, um, especially after the hackathon, if you want to continue hosting and building upon your project. Um, so a little bit about Ascend itself is that we have built out this catalog of all of our data sets that you can quickly get access to here. Um, and this makes it really easy to integrate with, a, with whatever sort of data project you're building, um, whether that be a Jupyter notebook, a Python based application, or um, any other sort of potential BI tool. Um, all of our integration suite is available here. Um, and yeah, we're happy to help out. Um, me as a product manager and the rest of our field team will be available um, on the Slack channel, hashtag Ascend. Excellent, thank you, Andy. Uh, now let's move on with uh, Rana from Google Cloud. And I want to thank um, the Lumiata team, as well as all of the uh, participants of the hackathon for joining us today. Um, I have a bit of information to share about um, what Google Cloud is going to be sharing and um, uh, providing for all of our um, hackathon participants today. So for those of you who may um, uh, you know, deal with Google on a daily basis, um, of course, you're familiar with a lot of the tools that Google provides um, for your daily use, uh, search, Gmail, so on and so forth. But some things that um, are, you know, behind the scenes with Google are the resources and the data centers that um, support all of the billion user applications that Google provides. So essentially, if we boil down the difference between Google and Google Cloud, which is um, you know, what you can leverage as part of this hackathon, is Google will provide and organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful, while Google Cloud brings you the best of Google uh, to help you be more agile and evolve your business and your projects. So a high level regarding some of um, the Google Cloud differentiators and some things that you can take advantage of. Security, um, hybrid multi-cloud, um, fully managed no operations and serverless products, embedded AI and machine learning in many of our products, and bringing the culture of innovation to our customers and partners, uh, as well as bringing the best of Google. So as part of uh, the multiple GCP technologies that you can take advantage of as part of this hackathon, um, specifically, uh, which might be relevant to you, are our data analytics platform, um, going from our data capture technologies to processing technology, as well as analytics and machine learning. So at the core of uh, this data flow here is BigQuery, which is our best of breed, no operations and serverless data warehouse and analytics engine. So 
specifically regarding BigQuery. Uh, this is our um, no operations help specific data sets, as you can see here. And specifically, what I'd like to highlight for this hackathon are our COVID specific data sets, um, as you can see on here. Um, we are providing free querying on our COVID related data sets, so you are not um, incurring any costs on query, um, as well as free tiers for um, querying against any other data sets that you'd like to include in your research. So I'd like to do a quick overview of BigQuery for those of you who may not be familiar. Um, as I said, it is a serverless and no ops uh, data warehouse where you can go ahead and immediately query the data um, and gain insights. So if you go to the left hand side here, you see all of our public data query against this, these data sets. For example, um, against the John Hopkins University data set, you can run your queries and immediately go ahead and gain the insights um, that uh, you require without having to set up any infrastructure. So apart from these data sets, uh, Google Cloud also has an AI platform, essentially um, providing you tools and services for um, you know, utilizing Python um, notebooks or pre-configured environments with ML frameworks and libraries and so on and so forth. Um, and since this is deeply integrated with BigQuery, you can utilize the data that you have within BigQuery to um, gain insights or run uh, machine learning models to gain even um, deeper insights. So to close, I'd just like to talk a little bit about some of the offerings um, that uh, Google Cloud as a whole is doing to support the uh, COVID hackathon here, as Megal mentioned earlier. We will have uh, daily office hours on the hashtag Google Cloud channel on Slack every Monday, every day from Monday through Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. Pacific time. So what this means is we will have customer engineers such as myself uh, who will be able to answer any questions that you have about Google Cloud Platform. Uh, so please feel free to reach out to us at any time uh, during the hackathon with any questions um, that we can help you answer. Of course, as I mentioned, we also have the BigQuery public data sets that are free for you to use uh, as part of this hackathon. And finally, we will be providing 50 users with $150 in Google Cloud credits specifically for this hackathon. So what you can do is you can go to um, Google, uh, Google gcpcredits.com slash um, Go ahead and sign in with your uh, credentials. And then what you'll see is this site, which will uh, show with the Lumiata event ID. Go ahead and click here with um, there, and you will then be able to see $150 in credits that will be applied to uh, your account listed below, which you can then go ahead and use uh, for your GCP uh, services, for the projects that you create as part of this hackathon, and they will not interfere with any existing free trial credits that you may have existing. So that's all for the Google Cloud team. Thank you so much and um, have a great time during the hackathon. Thank you, Rana, I appreciate it. Uh, now it's our turn actually. So we're gonna give you a little overview of the Lumiata platform. Uh, figures that if we're throwing this event that we should actually show what, what, what on earth we do. So I will give you a very quick tour of, of the Lumiata platform. Um, Jessica, would you mind please put in the slide in? Thank you. So just I'll give you, I'm gonna show you contextually. Uh, first, I'm gonna show you at a glance what the platform is and then I'll give you a quick, quick demo. Uh, and Corey's gonna help me with that as well. So this is a Lumiata AI platform. It, there's a lot of AI platforms out there, but we're trying to do something very specific to healthcare. There are specific problems that uh, teams in data teams in healthcare have and we're trying to provide a few additional layer of layers of abstraction that that should help those teams so we have three three layers to our to our platform we have the data management side this is all about bringing in disparate data sources and doing automatic data quality checks automatic cleansing of the data and tying all the disparate data sources into single longitudinal person records so that even though the data comes from different sources, you end up with one record per person and everything about that person from a health uh, perspective is in that single record. 
And that makes just analysis on the data a lot easier uh, and faster in a sense. The, and, and we have also some capabilities around enriching the data. Uh, healthcare data is not perfect. Nobody ever has a complete picture. If our customers come uh, from the insurance side, an insurance company will only have the history of the person for the time that they were covered by that insurance plan. So we'll have just a little slice of, of, the, of the person. A healthcare provider is only going to have um, the slice of the patient for the times that they went to that provider. So to solve for some of that problem, we've built some clinical IP that tries to add additional labels to the, to the record um, and try to complete the picture uh, for, for, for the patient. In the middle, we have AI Studio. This is all, uh, these are all the tools that a data scientist or even an analyst can use to build machine learning models uh, with the Lumiata platform. And in addition, we have a model library. So we have around 100 plus pre-trained models that solve for specific use cases in, in healthcare, ranging from cost, risk prediction, all the way over to medical events and disease onset prediction. Then we have some capabilities around machine learning operations. We monitor for things like um, a model drift and things of that nature once a model is in production. Finally, there's the applications and integration layer. This is the layer that people can use to integrate the results uh, that are produced with the Lumiata platform into other systems. So once a model is built, it can be integrated with legacy systems via APIs. And we have also built some applications for very specific business personas in healthcare. There's a cost intelligence application that uh, tries to target uh, underwriters and actuaries in, in healthcare. So that's the context uh, you know, at a glance. Now let me show you a couple of things. So I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, just, yeah, thank you. So I'm gonna share my screen. And there's two, there's two modes in which you can operate in the Lumia platform. There's a user interface, which is what you're seeing here on the screen in a moment. Uh, they support multi-factor authentication because we are in healthcare, so we have to be a little extra secure. So let me just make sure that I pass that one second. Uh, I have to go to my phone and actually accept the notification that was just sent. Um, let's see why am I might not seeing it. Let's try again. Well not seeing the push notification being sent. So that's an issue. Uh, there you go. Just a little bit of a delay for whatever reason. So there you go, it's approved. Sorry, I think it may actually be my internet that's a little bit slow right now. Hold on one second. Apologies for this. The, the, the problem with doing things from home, the unexpected can happen. Uh, going back to this, okay, accept it again. All right, just have to get my phone into a different network. Uh, okay, so this this is the Lumia platform at a glance. So there's the data uh, management side that I was talking about, the AI studio and then the application side. I'll just give you a very quick tour. Uh, in the data set, you can see the, the data sets that you've loaded. And typically, we deal with claims or EHR data. Uh, given the data set, you can go into the data set and look at some high level statistics so that you understand what data set this is. Uh, you can identify the data set. And then, if you're not a, a super technical person and you don't know SQL, then you can query uh, the data via this interface. Uh, you can uh, query data by date of birth, uh, coverage period. You can uh, uh, look for specific codes. And these codes are diagnosis codes, medication codes, and it could even be lab codes. Uh, once you run a query, you can save queries, and then you can come to this view. You will see a safe query. You can access the safe query. It'll run, and uh, once it completes, you can see the records for that query. And I'll show that in a moment. Um, and, you know, we expect that the more technical people are going to want more something like a notebook and not the interface. Uh, but I want to show you this first, and Corey is going to actually show our notebook interface. Given uh, a data set, you can actually start an experiment with that data set. So when you create an experiment, you can select the data set, the learning problem you're going after. It's either regression or classification. 
You can select the target variable, so basically whatever it is you're trying to predict. Um, and then there's some slicing that you can do on your data um, because you may not want to use the entire training set. There may be a way that you need to slice it so that the dates work out for you. Um, you can ask the, you can do your splits or machine learning splits, train by the test. Um, once you have an experiment uh, set up, you can run the experiment and you can start iterating with the experiment. So given Given an experiment, this is what starting a run looks like. You can select the features that you want to include, the learning algorithm. In this example, there's only linear regression, but there could be other uh, learning algorithms. If I go back here, I can go to a experiment that had multiple runs. So you can see the different runs. And once you have a run that actually performs well, you can deploy the model, you can publish the model, and then you will see that published model in this view. So here's all my published models. Uh, I can actually select one of these. I can look at the, the performance of the model. Uh, we you can uh, look at the history uh, of the model to see how I got to, to that rendition of the model. Um, and if I want to run some predictions, I could go to model serving and create uh, a new prediction set. So I, I give my prediction set a name uh, and a description. I can select the data set that I'm going to apply the model to and I select the feature end date, and then that'll just generate predictions against the data or do inference or score the data, whatever term you like to use. Um, so that's more or less at a glance, just what the user interface looks like. Corey, do you want to do a quick overview of the Jupyter interface, please? Sure. I'm going to stop sharing so that you can actually do that. Here you go. Um, okay, can you see my screen? Yes. So uh, as Miguel uh, stated, um, all the functionality that you just saw in the UI is actually accessible um, through a Jupyter Notebook where a lot of data scientists uh, feel a little more comfortable navigating. Maybe they have their own way, the way they like to do things. Um, so we do allow the same functionality that you just saw through the UI through um, our Lumiata package. So it's a Python package that we can use to do the exact same functions, but outside of there. So we can see that um, all of the functions you just saw him do from splitting data, from deciding targets, uh, from adding hyperparameters to creating actual models can all be done through this Jupyter Notebook. So it allows the flexibility of you to do the model development and uh, allows you to tie back into our service to do the model serving um, through this Jupyter Notebook. So um, I think more advanced data scientists will like the flexibility of being able to do this outside of, of kind of a, a stringent UI. Um, so that's one great thing, we provide that. Um, the second thing is we provide uh, the ability for, and this might be better for a data analyst, to provide the ability of once he, he uh, Miguel uh, brought up that we make this longitudinal patient or person record, which kind of has a timeline of all of the claims um, that they've had. Uh, well, this allows us to actually go through and view that and do some EDA or um, do some EDA on exploratory data analysis on these this LDM. So as from a data analyst standpoint, being able to actually visualize the data um, that we create from this LDM, which is, is, is Lumiata specific, uh, really gives a lot more functionality. Um, and you, then you can add that with traditional Python packages out there that you can now um, make your own plots. So matplotlib, something like that, you can start to you know, build your own plots, build your own visualizations as you, fit, you see fit using our Lumiata data model. Um, I think that's really what we want to capture there, right? Yes, you know? yes that basically covers it. And you know, if, if a data scientist wants a coding interface uh, and just wants to uh, code a model the way that um, uh, Corey has been showing, they still get a lot of value from Lumiata because we abstract the underlying infrastructure so they don't have to worry about, well, do I need to use GPUs or CPUs and how do I configure them? How do I do all that? They don't have to worry about that. And then more importantly, on the data side, you know, they, they get a clean state to start from. As you know, like 85% of the time that uh, uh, the data scientists uh, put in their work goes into just wrangling data. So we're trying to take on that heavy lifting on behalf of the data scientists on the data side. And I'll stop there. There's a lot more to say, but um, we don't want to cover the whole time. So then moving on to the, to the next presenter, um, I believe we have next... Uh, we have next uh, we have Roxette. Great thanks Miguel this is Ben uh, from Roxette so um, yeah great to be here and, and thanks for the invite and uh, I'm just going to share a couple of slides on what Roxette does where it's a good fit 
um, <clears throat> how we can help in this process over the, the next few days and just give you a quick demo of the product as well so you can see what it looks kind of hands-on. Um, let's just share a screen and we'll get started. So just a couple of slides um, to set some context. So, um, so effectively, Rockset is a serverless database for data-driven applications. Um, so we are a completely, um, as we say, cloud-based serverless database designed for real-time kind of event-driven applications. And you know, the way we, what we see a lot in the industry is that building these sort of data-driven applications is, is complex, time-consuming and expensive. And you know, why we're, I think, a really good fit for um, you know, the hackathon over the next few days is that time-consuming part. So where we really excel is being able to bring together disparate data sources into a, an online database that you can then use to easily connect into things like web applications, dashboards, BI tools, um, anything that's sort of you know, data-driven. And the way this works, um, <clears throat> we, we effectively join and index those disparate data sources. And we do that without any ETL or tuning. So typically people will connect in uh, data sources into Rockset, things like real-time event streams from things like Kafka or Kinesis, um, or database change streams from upstream databases. Um, and that really goes back to the, the connecting of those disparate data sources. So once that data comes into Rockset, it's uh, automatically indexed, and then you can run fast SQL across uh, all of that data that's been saved, including joins, um, you know, which, which really makes it powerful. So under the covers, you know, what do we actually do? Um, as I mentioned before, we have sort of these click and connect to real-time event streams. So there's no ETL, there's no code being written to, to start hydrating Rockset with, uh, with other data sources. And we automatically index that data in real time. So we actually do that in three ways under the covers. We create a, a document index, an inverted index, um, and we also have a, a column of store as well. So what that means is you can then run um, you know, very fast SQL across that data. And you know, it doesn't really matter what type of query you throw at, at the platform. And the last part here is that um, you know you power your apps without the servers, and you can actually save your SQL queries and access those via HTTP. So if you're building into front-end web applications, for example, um, there's a really simple interfaces to do that, and you can even connect in things directly like uh, Tableau dashboards as well into the same data sets. So let me give you a very quick look at the product, so you can get a feel for what this looks like. Um, just sign up, create an account. This is, a, as we said before, a completely serverless environment. <clears throat> and you see here that we have a, the concept of what we call collections. These are effectively um, analogous to a, a database table. And you'll see for each of those, uh, they're actually connected to a source data set. So we've got stuff coming in from Kafka or file uploads. If you've got sort of CSV, JSON data, XML, Parquet, you can just throw it directly in. Um, you know, Amazon DynamoDB, S3. But what this is great for in the context of what we're doing here is that if you have those sort of data sets, um, <clears throat> you can just push them directly into the system or you can stick them on S3 and Rockset automatically keeps in sync with those data changes. So any changes that go on in your S3 or Dynamo or whatever, they're gonna be reflected into Rockset as well. Um, so once your data's in, we have this, um, actually, let's just take a quick look at one of these. Um, Let's have a look at a feed coming in through something like Kafka, so a real-time data stream. And one of the things you'll see is that although this, in this case, we've got sort of raw JSON data coming in, um, Rockset automatically wraps a relational schema around the data. So as soon as that data's coming, even though it's kind of um, you know, semi-structured data, you can then start querying this using SQL. Um, so I've clicked onto this the SQL interface here, and I can you know, kick off and run my SQL as you kind of expect, you know, running SQL on no SQL data effectively. And let me just give you a, a bit more of a, uh, a useful example or a complex example where you can join those different data sets. Here we've got some live data coming in from Twitter. We're joining this with, a, this is coming in over, over Kafka, and we're joining that with a, um, a data set from S3 and giving sort of live um, analytics based on that data. And, and from here, you would then take that and, uh, you know, you can visualize that and using tools like Redash or Tableau or Grafana. Um, but more commonly, you sort of package these things up into what we call lambdas. And a lambda is effectively just a saved SQL query 
that you can access via HTTP. So if I give this a, um, a name here, <clears throat> let's create this, and you can see that we get a dedicated URL to execute that SQL. And I can access that over just HTTP or using you know, any sort of um, uh, programming language of your choice like Node or Python and Java. And, and like many of the other um, you know, vendor tools here today, you can access these things and things like uh, Jupyter Notebooks, depending on um, you know, where's your, your preferred platform of choice. So I'm going to leave it there. That's uh, that's Rockstep. But as I say, we're a um, high performance real time database in the cloud, um, you know, easily connecting to other data sources to uh, start running fast SQL across that, that NoSQL data. And myself and my colleague, the Dean, are going to be here. Um, we're available on the Slack channel. So any questions, any help you need, um, please don't hesitate. And uh, yeah, we're here to help. Thank you, Ben. Appreciate it. Now, moving on to the, to the next presenter, we have Snowflake. Todd, want to take it away? <clears throat> Great. Thank you, Miguel. And, and huge thank you to Lumiata for inviting Snowflake to uh, participate um, in, the, in the hackathon. So give me one second. Share my screen. <clears throat> All right. So again, my name is Todd Carlson. I'm the head of healthcare and life sciences here at Snowflake. Um, and just a really quick uh, kind of give you a, a sense of who Snowflake is, if you don't already know. Uh, Snowflake is a cloud data platform, uh, basically cloud agnostic, runs on Google, AWS, uh, and Azure. Uh, we basically take data sources from, you name it, from uh, CRM data, electronic healthcare record, you can see it on the left there, web data to IOMT, both structured and semi-structured data sets. Uh, bring those into Snowflake and, and do a variety of data pipeline, data engineering, data lake uh, capabilities, uh, as well as obviously data science and very applicable here. Uh, and people are able to build data applications on top of Snowflake. I'm a, I'm a former customer. I uh, was actually the first cu customer to put PHI in Snowflake back in 2016. So I have a lot of experience in, in doing things like that. And then uh, the data exchange, uh, one of our newest features and, and what we do there, and that'll be applicable to kind of what the what we're bringing to the table for the hackathon and what people are able to do. So um, basically what you think about and, and what you're able to do with Snowflake is, is our unlimited scalability and concurrency. Uh, probably not as relevant for a hackathon. You have a small team of people doing it, but recognize that one of our core competencies is the fact of unlimited concurrency and scalability uh, and an ability to streamline your data pipelines and then obviously removing your DevOps burden from our data replication uh, perspective as well. Um, jumping right into, you know, what's going on here with, with the hackathon and what are we offering? Um, and I want to go ahead and call out Sigma right now. We had, uh, Sigma's done some great work, you know, with some of this and what we've done. Uh, so I think this all comes down to where your, where your happy place is. Uh, if you're a, uh, an analyst, data scientist type person, and you want to work at that layer, then, uh, I'm going to preview and kind of hint at what Sigma is going to be offering. Uh, but if you're at the level and you want to work within Snowflake and have access to our public data exchange and really work within the power of the platform, then, then uh, here you'll see some references. These are going to be immediately available on the Snowflake uh, Slack channel uh, right after this session. Uh, you, we are offering a, uh, our $400 free trial account, um, which you, you'll see the link there. It will be in the, in the channel afterwards. Uh, and then you'll see access to this data set. So, the data set, uh, I think you heard Miguel mention, is the Star Schema data set. Uh, it's one of our Snowflake partners that has uh, been building and aggregating, curating um, a COVID-19 data set. You see it here on the right listed out. Uh, it is now 20 uh, data sets that have all been and put together and curated and normalized. And so I think that's, from an acceleration perspective, that's what we're, we're offering here is an ability to accelerate your, your analysis. Um, as far as not having to go out to the individual data sets and try to join them yourself. Um, so uh, I'll keep it really quick. Um, obviously, you know, uh, we'll, get, we'll be available via the Slack channels. We'll, we'll schedule some uh, office hours as well uh, for people that want to ask us questions, but don't ever hesitate to reach out. We have a team of folks that will be uh, monitoring the Slack channel uh, for the next uh, the duration of the hackathon, uh, so don't hesitate to reach out. Um, and then I'm not going to steal any uh, Sigma, John, I'm not going to steal your thunder. Uh, so I'll let you guys go into kind of what you're doing on top of what we've offered. And I'll leave it at that. Keep it short and sweet. Go for it, John. Let me stop. Cool. 
Thank you, Todd. Let me share my screen here. Okay, so let me give you guys a quick introduction and then I wanna jump into a demo. So what is Sigma? Sigma is the world's first business intelligence analytics tool that is built in the cloud for cloud data warehouses, uh, such as Snowflake and also BigQuery. And the primary thing you'll notice about Sigma when you first log into it is that it's like a spreadsheet. So if you can use a spreadsheet like Excel or Google Sheets, then you can use Sigma and you can analyze your data and you can analyze it at, at scale. And every time you do something in Sigma, it is going to generate SQL and it's going to pass it on down to the cloud data warehouse, such as, as Snowflake. So a big part of what we developed is an easy to use uh, spreadsheet like interface, which then pushes queries down to data warehouse. You're always querying the data live. Uh, there's a whole collaboration side of things where you can share out the work you've done. And Sigma also has a lot of flexibility in how you can wire up or join different tables together. And also for uh, parsing uh, semi-structured data uh, like JSON. Uh, to get started with Sigma uh, for this hackathon, we have provided uh, everyone with uh, with an account on Sigma and the information for doing the sign up is posted on the Slack channel. I'll show, you, I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Uh, when you're inside of Sigma, if you need help any time, you'll see in the lower right-hand side, there's a chat button. And that chat button actually goes to a real human being, a real person that works uh, for Sigma uh, based in the Bay Area, who's an expert and can help you if you get stuck at any point. And next week, we'll also be doing a more in-depth uh, working session. Now, if you follow the link uh, for the sign-up, it'll look something like this. Uh, you put in your first name, last name, the email should be already populated, choose a password and get started. So it's pretty easy uh, to get in there. And you can use this for any kind of analysis against the COVID data. And you can also use it for visualizations and dashboards. And you can even embed those dashboards into, into a portal. So let me give you a demo here. After you log in, you'll be able to uh, go to the data set that Todd was just talking about in Snowflake. So we've already set up a connection here called Hackathon. And this is the star schema that Todd was referring to. You can see there's about 20 or so tables in here. And you're free to join these together however you want. I'm going to demo just querying uh, one table uh, right now in the short amount of time we have. So what this data set is, and you can see there's a, a, a comment up here, is it's COVID data at the uh, for, for the U.S., for the state and county level. And it's done at the at the daily grain, has things like number of cases, number of deaths, and so on. And we can create a worksheet. And a worksheet is uh, kind of like a like a spreadsheet workbench with which you start analyzing the data. And then we can start grouping the data. So we want to look at things, let's say, by state, and then also group it by county. And this is one of the things that Sigma does really well, is we create these things that are called levels. And then at each level, we can start adding calculations. And you can see it works just like a spreadsheet. Add a new column here, type in an Excel-like formula and say, we want to sum up number of cases. Cases is the column uh, right over here. And we'll call this state cases. And then we can add another column. We could sum up the uh, number of deaths here, call it state deaths. And then we could also add one called uh, the death rate, where you take the state deaths divided by state cases, and everything's a formula in here. And then we can start, and then we can start formatting these. We'll call this the the state death rate. And then we can format this one as a percent, and then format these two as as a number. And then we can start to do some th things at the county level. We can also collapse up these columns to make it a little easier to read. And we can add, let's add two new columns. And what's great about this is we can just copy and paste these formulas here. We'll sum up the cases here. And because it's at the county level, it now takes on a different meaning. So Sigma is smart enough to know that since we're under county, we can do county cases here. And then we could do, Post up the deaths here, and this would be the county deaths. And then finally, the county deaths divided by 
county cases to give us the, the county rate. And plus this as a percent too. Going through this a little fast, we can go through this uh, in more detail during the workshop. And then you can also do computations across uh, different levels here. So if you wanna know what percent the county cases are of the state cases, we can say county cases divided by state cases. This is uh, going between levels, going up one level here and format that as a percent as well. And we'll call this uh, percent of state cases. And then if we wanted to, we could also see what the average number of cases is for the state, for each, uh, for all counties in the state. So we'll call this uh, county cases, average number uh, county cases. Now this one is going back one level here. And then after we've done all this computation here, if we want to then visualize it, say on a map, we can go over here and we'll create a new chart and see lots of different chart types. We'll create a map and we have support for latitude and longitude. We also have support for what's called uh, GeoJSON, uh, which is a way to describe an area in a map with polygon. And to make this possible, we're gonna join in another data set, which I created um, earlier today, which you'll be able to find inside of here. And I create one for counties and for states. So I'll pull in the one for county right now. And this lets, this also shows you how you can define a join condition on the fly. So we'll join in the state to the state, and then we'll join in the county to the county. This GeoJSON data is just something I found online. It's publicly available, but I also pulled it into here just for convenience. And then what we can do is we can take the county uh, data here and put it as the GeoJSON column. And then we wanna take the county information here. And let's say we want to plot the county death rates uh, for the color. And then when we look at the legend, we're gonna to wanna to see things like the county name. Uh, we'll see the total number of counties, uh, the county deaths. We'll just, we'll just bring these all, we'll just bring all these things over here. And we could do the same thing for the state too. But here you can see now it's color coded uh, by county. So you can see there's some hot spots over here. If you hover over these in North Dakota, uh, this has an 83% death rate, but you can also see the number of, the number of cases and county deaths is um, quite small. So it's a small absolute number. If we were to go over somewhere more populated, let's say we went over to, uh, to Philadelphia, you can see it has a 1.9% uh, mortality rate with 27% of the cases uh, in the state. So quite easy to connect to the data, get started, and to join other data sources and to visualize it. And you can ultimately put this onto a, uh, a dashboard as well, and then uh, put it on, and then share it out with other people. So that's that's it for the introduction. Okay. Um, John, if I can add, the, there's a metadata table inside of all that, which gives you the data dictionary for everything. So that people found that helpful. So in that list there, just so you get, yep, that Yeah, metadata. I saw that earlier today. Yep. This one right here. Exactly. Yeah, that's a very helpful. Everyone asked about it, so I guess I'm going to go ahead and tell you there's your data dictionary for everything. So yeah, I actually used this this morning. It's quite useful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Excellent. Thank you guys very cool. much. Appreciate it. Uh, it, we should mention that these were very short um, overviews of these products, but we will be scheduling longer overviews next week, longer workshops. Uh, we'll be scheduling those within the next couple of days. For sure, we have scheduled the Roxit one. That'll take place Tuesday at 4 p.m. We will send an email to all attendees as well as uh, we'll post in the Slack channels what the final schedule will be for the longer workshops. These will be anywhere between 30 to, to 60 minutes, depending on what the content's going to be. And again, you can find all of these guys uh, in, in this Slack work, uh, workspace within their respective Slack channels. So thank you very much. I'm going to pass it back to Jessica before we wrap up. Jessica, are you there? Oh, Jessica. I was muted, sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so want to share the, the Slack channels, as Miguel said, and then lastly, um, I'm going to put in the um, 
the chat right now. Um, and in fact, sorry, I, I wasn't prepared. Um, I should have been more prepared, but I've got right here the email address and the address to the Slack channels that I'm gonna give everyone so that you have it. Um, let me get that yeah, uh, right in the If you're slide. not in Slack, um, you may wanna use the, the URL that Jessica is gonna post. Uh, it's an invite URL. Some people were having issues with joining via that post. Um, I think it, it just, was a bug in that post, sporadic bug. So if you have any problems, use the URL that Jessica's about to post. Yep, so that's now up in uh, in the chat. Um, so feel free, it's a long one, so I pasted it there rather than put it on the slide. And obviously our email address is also in dev post. Um, you can reach us there. We are all active on Slack already ready, willing, and able to answer all your questions. Um, we want to thank you all. We, we miraculously are ending on time. It's, it's beautiful. Thank you to all of our partners. Um, I think you, everyone attending can see we've just had some great people step forward to help us, some really exciting technology. We can't wait to see the submissions. We're super excited. You'll be hearing from us periodically through a dev post email to keep you updated on events that are happening over the next two weeks. And um, we'll be, uh, the Zoom link will be available on DevPost for the award ceremony, which will be at the same time, 2 p.m. Pacific um, on May 8th. Until then, good luck. We wish you all the best. And thank you for participating in the Lumiana Hackathon. Thank you. And good afternoon. Have a great weekend. Bye, everyone. Thank you.